very happy to have the opportunity to talk to you just about um, about your, your your the emerging Democratic majority. Just uh, briefly, um, this uh, this was a uh, this is a book that you wrote in two thousand two that essentially um, has really um, uh, the I, I don't know uh, the predictions or the um, uh, what you perceived was happening in terms of the demographics in this country have now really come into relief. And um, the I just want to get your thoughts on on how how it, what happens from here because it seems that the Republican Party um, has was completely caught flat-footed in terms of these demographic shifts and and is all is almost too wed to the way that they had constructed uh, their majorities in the past to really um, to to really change in any fashion. I mean the um, the, the the thing that I um, uh, the analogy that I, I, I uh, that I use is sort of the Red Sox uh, before pre two thousand four, where the 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 fans just wanted to get into the playoffs, and so the um, the team could never really have that rebuilding year that they needed to have uh, because they had to be just good enough to maintain. Uh, the demands of the fans, and it seems almost the Republicans are in that same situation. They can't really have a, a rebuilding year, and if they don't, they're going to be a permanent uh, minority, uh, at least as far as uh, you know they can, uh, assuming they can't redistrict more than they already have. Well, let's get back to baseball for a minute. The Cubs had the same problem, too, incidentally. After 2003, <laughs> well, we didn't rebuild, and now we're you know, and anyway, yes, uh, that's a nice that's a nice way of thinking about the Republicans. Uh, the o only thing I I'd say though is that um, uh, because of political mistakes that the Obama people made in those first two years, the Republicans have the House. They're going to keep it, I think, for a lot of this decade, um, and they still have a lot of governorships. They still have a, a base in the country that's sufficient, to, at least as a veto. Uh, and uh, so they're not uh, they're not as in bad shape as they were in the 1930s, for instance. Um, but the problem you, you cite is a real one because their base doesn't permit them to uh, make the kind of adjustments that would be necessary to win na national elections. I mean, I thought I I thought last summer that Romney would have had a good chance. I mean, I thought he had a good chance at the time if he had turned to the center uh, at the at the convention, chosen uh, uh, Portman instead of Ryan. Um, and, uh, w and he did turn to the center in about a month, but it was really too late, and then you had the 47% thing, and he was finished. But, but again, I don't think he could do that because uh, there would have been such an uproar at the uh, convention. So they're, they're kind of, they are kind of... Uh, they're kind of stuck, but they're not uh, decimated. They have a they have a real base in the country. And, and I just want to get your your sense on um, uh, on uh, the the uh, when we talk about Freddy Krueger, um, the uh, the 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 notion of a grand bargain and the idea of entitlement reform. Um, it 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 seems like, uh, and by entitlement reform, uh, I'm talking about cuts to Medicare or and or uh, Social Security. That that really seems to be um, the, uh, the 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 monster that will not die. And it seems that it's it's not dying because, to a certain extent, well, not to a certain extent. I mean, it's on the White House um, uh, website. The that offer is continually dangled out there uh, by the administration for. Uh, anybody who will jump at it. I mean, uh, give me your take on on the the, the politics of that and uh, the uh, how. Well, I, I was thinking about that when you were talking about the media, and uh, uh, Krugman wrote about this too. I I, I spoke at, at a conference of German and American uh, newspaper editors about a month ago, and. Uh, I was just amazed at the extent to which the American editors, who were editors of big shot newspapers or editorial page editors and editorial page editors, uh, 
uh, agreed with the kind of conventional wisdom about debts and deficits and, and entitlements, and we have this terrible problem in our country, and neither the Republicans or the Democrats will budge, and, and what we need is a uh, compromise. I think, and, and I think you can't you can't attribute that to uh, manipulation from uh, Washington. It's uh, it comes up through the colleges. I'm not sure, but that ideology is extraordinarily powerful and uh, i think as far as the country's future it's it's completely wrong i'm not a uh, i i don't think that the problem uh, in our uh, economy lies in um, in uh, to in deficits i don't and i don't think it lies in entitlement so uh it's um again it's a it's a disturbing problem and i think that the uh, i i i I worry that the Obama people will give in on this uh, the way they they uh, gave in a lot during his first term. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's I don't know if the dynamic is that they're giving in or it's simply that they're actually pursuing it. I mean, uh, you know, the uh, from I mean, it, it is another one of those um, Elm Street uh, scenarios where uh, the establishment uh, uh Conventional wisdom is this notion of deficit and debt hysteria. I would, I would argue that it's a function of, of, of essentially a, a a wealthy establishment essentially that is that is protecting their own interests. Uh, it's hard to say that this is a the administration giving in uh, on this because they seem to be the ones who are pursuing it as vigorously as anybody else. I mean, um, the Republicans can talk in general terms about cutting Social Security and Medicare, but they they, they can't possibly do it on their own. Uh, and they need the uh, Obama administration. The Obama administration, to the extent that they are, um, they are not able to carry out their agenda of this so-called entitlement reform, it seems to be just a function of they need to get uh, revenues as some type of, of cover, and that's a poison pill for the Republicans. Well, um, again, I don't have any real inside information on this subject. I, I l- listen to what the president says at times, and and I heard him when he said that told the Republicans that he didn't think deficits were a problem. My my feeling about them is that uh, if, if they were able to do so, uh, they would present a program and a budget that did not contain any significant entitlement reform that uh, spent a lot on the infrastructure and um, investments for the future and they had tax cuts that were heavily weighted uh, toward, the, toward the wealthy. Uh, I think Obama believes... Uh, that he can't get that and that he has to compromise in order to uh, prevent a much worse situation uh, in terms of cuts, uh, budget cuts. Um, and, and, and he's invited that by agreeing to this sequester stuff uh, a year and a half ago in August of, of 2011. So, um, Do you think that was an inadvertent invitation? I mean, because we know from uh, Gene Sperling uh, in his uh, his email to Bob Woodward, um, uh, putting aside the the yeah. uh, the intimidation factor, but we know that he is claiming that that was part of the DNA of this sequester was to force a situation that brought about entitlement reform and increased revenue. Oh, I think they thought that the. Republicans would be so worried about the military side of it that they'd agree to a deal. I think it was just a, I think it was a miscalculation, and that whole, uh, that whole period was a was just a period of. All, I, I think it was the, uh, the uh, darkness before the dawn in terms of the administration. It was an end point. The August, the July, August of uh, 2011. They just made terrible mistakes. Uh, and I think they realized they did afterwards, but the mistake with the sequester was a, a tactical one. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 I would certainly agree that it was a failure from a tactical standpoint, but I also think that what they were pursuing uh, with that sequester was also problematic. I, my, my, my sense is that the dawn is a little hazy. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine, yeah. But, but. They're, they, it, it's not like they're wedded to the, this this kind of uh, fiscal austerity. They aren't, and to the extent that they seem to court that, it, it is out of a political desperation rather than uh, 
rather than out of any conviction. That's uh, at least that's what I think. Well, um, I, I I hope you're right, and I hope that it um, it uh, it won't make any difference if I'm right if they end up making the deal. Well, I, my get, hope is that that, that lack of conviction <laughs> that lack of conviction in some way uh, implicates their ability to make that deal. But um, yeah, I suspect uh, the uh, I, I'm I'm rather bet at this point on uh, the inability of uh, Boehner to uh, to get his caucus to vote for uh, increased revenues uh, as the as the saving grace for Social Security and Medicare, as, as, as sort of perverse as that sounds. But, um, John Judith, real pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, good talking to you.